please welcome the stage Rich Thorne. Thank you very much. And, um, and before I begin, um, thanks to John and the wider SOCON uh, 2011 team for inviting um, us here to talk today. Um, great panel earlier on, and I think you know, one of the key things that came out of that was that social media is fundamentally a, a channel. You know, the art of the discipline is in how we apply traditional ideas, um, techniques, methodologies, um, combine those with digital marketing tactics and deliver um, as much value as we can. And before I begin, um, I guess one thing I just wanted to touch upon was the fact that I think you know, at Warner, absolutely, um, we've integrated social media into everything we do in terms of recruitment, team building within the business. A lot of our projects are, are managed um, via social hubs, whether that's Facebook, whether that's internal tools, um, and market research. Again, an incredibly important um, avenue um, gives us the ability to be able to talk to a large number of consumers, um, look at how they engage with music, how they discover new artists, which is the lifeblood of our business, um, and then how we can maintain dialogue with those um, communities moving forwards. I guess two examples um, you know, before I go into how we work with our artists to manage their social media properties. Um, two examples of how we've worked with social media outside of that is probably number one, developer engagement. You know, for us, there's an incredible amount of ideas, an incredible amount of talent um, that's coming out of digital academia, coming out of um, agency land, coming out of, of bedrooms um, up and down the land. And the challenge for us to engage those communities of developers to help us produce the digital tools, products, uh, marketing assets that we need. Um, has been considerable, but we set up our first developer network uh, a number of years ago. That's growing well. We maintain dialogue um, effectively through that. Um, product testing as well, of course, for us. Again, social media is a, a critical channel. It allows us to put new ideas, concepts, products in front of music fans um, before we go to a broader market. So, um, you know, I think it really does touch all parts of the business. Um, but, yeah, let's move on to how we work and some of our experiences. So excuse me if I cough and splutter through this. I've got a bit of a cold today, so my apologies. But when I was thinking about what to talk about today, the first thing I wanted to focus on was exactly what is it that you know, all of us here today have in common? Um, and what are the experiences that we've all seen? And perhaps you may disagree. You know, please do um, you know, highlight your opinions when we get to questions at the end of the session um, as well. But you know, for us, social channels have evolved way beyond the initial learn and, and uh, test and learn phase. You know, if you look at um, MySpace's initial rise through 2005, 2006, the rapid rise of Facebook that came after that, the creation of niche, uh, niche communities rather um, across a number of, of very disparate passion points for consumers has been pretty rapid in the last few years. And I think we have learnings in and now it's really about moving into a phase to act upon those, um, which is something that we focus very much upon. Um, from three years ago, really, once we started to look at how we could rebuild internally to deliver in a social age. Um, the digital marketing sector is certainly fragmented across a lot of different disciplines. We're very, very open to you know, all, of, all of our agency partners. We invite people to come in, present new ideas, concepts, case studies to us on a regular basis. But our experience, and I'm interested to know whether everyone else is here is, is similar from an in-house perspective, is that it's very, very disparate, you know, all the way from search and early search agencies through design build agencies that have now evolved, um, often offering a full service, traditional agencies, certainly from the world of PR and advertising, that now have a solid digital offer, often in quite siloed areas. It means it's a very, very noisy environment. And at the same time, of course, that's led to the internal challenge of having a digital marketing team, often having a marketing team as well. How those two teams operate together, how those two teams integrate, um, and what one marketing team of the future can actually look like. Um, and that, of course, leads to disruption, disruption across the agency market, disruption in-house, and that's a healthy disruption. I think we're all innovating, but as I said, informed by the learnings that we already have in from the last decade plus, um, provides quite an exciting opportunity. And my last point, um, really, as part of the introduction, is everything we do is mobile, um, especially as a, as a music company, our product, um, a large part of our product now is digital. That, that for us, is a, a great opportunity. It's converged with our marketing, our sales channel, um, and our direct impulse purchase channel. So again, it means that ultimately we have to be channel agnostic, um, whether that's traditional, whether that's social, everybody has to understand how each of those channels work. 
So I wanted to look at five digital myths from 2011. Um, I'm sure um, you know, many people here may have seen all of these statements out there. They're all real. All of these comments have appeared within the media in the last year. So number one, traditional media channels are dying. I think we're probably way past the point now where that's a commonly held belief. You know, we see TV is still an incredibly important medium. TV is online, ultimately. TV is social, and TV is certainly mobile. So for us, again, integration of traditional channels with our social media channels is a critical part of our approach. Social media is about building the biggest community. Well, again, for us, we'll often inherit artists, perhaps, that have no fan base on Facebook. We'll work with them to build that fan base in partnership. Um, we may work with artists that come to us with 5, 10, 15 million fans. So our challenge is very much about how do we create engaging, meaningful communities that can deliver um, against our objectives, whether that's developing our artists, brand awareness in the brand world, or whether that's direct commerce. Um, and again, we benefit from working with innovative partners um, like Spotify and Deezer, um, who, for example, recently partnered, as everyone will know, with Facebook. And that provides us with a great opportunity to reach a larger pool of music fans and make sure that we can deliver everything that our artists expect. Um, everybody needs a mobile app. Um, again, I think we've been through the golden age of, of the, you know, the initial whirlpool of, of mobile app production. But for us, mobile is a complex channel. Build mobile applications ultimately absolutely can serve um, a very valuable purpose at the right time. But also, it's only one element of the toolkit that we have. Digital advertising across mobile channels works for us. Social is mobile, as we'll see. Um, and ultimately, mobile applications are, are only one execution um, that we need to look at. Gaming, again, something that's famed for touching the youth demographic. But for us, um, the convergence of, of digital entertainment across gaming, music, books and film means that, again, we're able to engage with communities across pretty diverse sectors. We work closely with all of the gaming companies that we have partnerships with, um, and we see that, again, a wide demographic, a mainstream demographic, is touched by all of these channels. And digital channels always deliver greater ROI than traditional. We spoke about analytics, we spoke about evaluation earlier. For us, ultimately, there's almost unlimited access to data um, for the first time. There's limited resource to actually analyze that data, pull learnings out. So for us, it's about prioritization. It's about looking at the old world, where brand awareness was measured in different ways. If you look at TV advertising, um, look at the metrics around that. And it's about combining those metrics of old with the new hard data-driven metrics um, of today, and actually getting to the point where we can evaluate our marketing campaigns holistically, whether they're digitally driven um, or whether they have important traditional elements. So five facts. Um, I'm not sure how useful these will be today, but, but social media overtook porn as the web's number one destination in 2011, um, which is a fact. One in five people, probably not at the same time, met their partner online. Um, two in five blame their divorce on social media as well, so it's not all positive, unfortunately, in the relationship space. And 20, 200 million tweets were sent every day. Um, we'll come on to Twitter and how we use that later on. Uh, and UCL down the road identified positive correlation between the number of Facebook friends somebody has and the quantity of grey matter in their brain. So it looks as though we're all in the right place in this room. So let's talk more about what we've done at Warner and how we deal with the challenges that we face in this space. So digital convergence for us. Um, this, we can't underestimate this opportunity. This means that our transactional, our distribution, our marketing channels have converged. We have a digital product. We can directly monetize through digital channels. That means that for the first time, we have to have a dialogue between commercial and marketing teams that you know, perhaps 15 years ago wouldn't have existed. But now we're moving towards one converged point. I think John made that point earlier on. The two channels are absolutely intertwined. Our challenge is pretty wide. Um, we're a music company. Um, the days of being a record company um, alone are no more. So for us, it's very much about working in partnership with our artists, looking at how we can help develop their careers across a number of streams, recorded music, live promotion, merchandise, sponsorship. All of these opportunities are impacted by the rise of digital channels, social mo uh, media in particular. Um, let's look at social media specifically. So to us, a Facebook like or listen is akin to the bedroom poster of old. It's something that people want to be associated with. When people create a Facebook account, one of the first five things they do is list the bands that they like. 
So again, our challenge is how do we actually harness that passion? How do we manage groups that can vary in size from 35 to 35 million fans? Um, how do we do that over the long term? And how do we structure, um, how do we evolve our structure? And what have we done to actually sustain that? Twitter brings fans much closer to artists than ever before. It, it brings an immediacy, brings an intimacy. Um, and we often find, again, that our artists see Twitter as a very personal tool, a very personal challenge. So our approach, if you like, is to make sure that we always respect how the artist wants to talk to their fans and we always listen to what it is the fans want to say to our artists. And I'll give you an example. Um, for Phil Collins on a recent campaign, um, it was great. You know, Phil was relatively new um, to social media. We worked with him to develop um, a great engaging set of content profiles, talk to fans directly, and the dialogue that came from that, from fans of all ages, um, led to some pretty direct things. I mean, one example was that Phil himself had thrown a tambourine from uh, the stage of the Genesis gig 20 years ago into the crowd, and the fan had been sitting there with the tambourine for 20 years, just desperately wishing he had the chance to get Phil to <coughs> sign that at the end of the show. So we were able to find the fan, the fan that came to us, the tambourine, we got that signed, um, and then the fan was able to have brief dialogue as well with, um, with, with Phil and with um, Warner, which was great. And you see those small conversations, that's one example of, of hundreds that go on every day going on. But again, the challenge is how do we actually um, build a business that can deal with that volume of conversations? How do we monitor those? And our approach has very much been to create an agency within the business. So we have a virtual network. Um, of digital specialists that work within our marketing teams worldwide and we have a central team here in London that pulls everything together and provides analysis, provides analytics, drives creative um, and provides digital development um, at value. For mobile, social media is mobile. Approximately 85% of all mobile web traffic is currently driven by Facebook and Twitter. Um, I think anyone who commutes uh, into London every day like me can see that it's an entire train carriage full of people using the Facebook application um, on their devices. So we've integrated all of our channels. We see every um, powerful media that we work with, medium that we work with as being social. Mobile is a powerful retail impulse channel for us. So again, it means that we're able to directly track the responses that we see from social media campaigns and we're able to attribute <coughs> value whether our objective is artist development, whether it's product awareness, which it may be if we're looking at an album launch, whether we're pushing some of our partnerships that we drive um, with our artists or indeed whether we're trying to sell digital a la carte retail music products directly through the mobile channel. And we're quite a long way into that process now. Um, we've got great relationships with you know, all of our main mobile partners. Um, and again, social media provides um, an incredibly important communications channel to support that. Um, choosing the right time and place for native app versus mobile web, I think it's probably a debate that we could have another day, another conference, but again, you know, we've um, used our social media communities to actually find out what it is our fans want. How do they want to engage with our artists? What do they want access to? And how does mobile as a channel within the social ecosystem actually play a role? Video for us, has and, and always um, will be an important marketing tool, but in the digital world, video is an important currency as well, certainly in social media. And if we look at our social media communities, we see our top three engagement activities as number one, new video, number two, um, exclusive access um, to tickets, merchandise, um, and number three, um, new photography. Now, I'm going for the most garish slide of the day, if I can with this, but um, our challenge was if we put social media at the heart of managing relationships with our fans and we view that as a channel, then it means that we have to become experts in applying many different disparate disciplines to that channel to actually drive success. And of course, this leads to problems when it comes to working with agencies because it's hard to find a long-term agency partner that we, can, excuse me, that we can work with to actually sustain the day-to-day -day work that we have to deliver across 10, 20, 30, um, you know, more um, priority artist social media profiles. So you can see here um, that our approach has been to, you know, look holistically, make sure that we've got an in-house resource that can actually fundamentally deliver 
Um, and now um, we deliver upwards of 80% of our social media execution internally with our, within our internal agency model and with our local embeds in every market. Um, social media, I think probably an important point here, is completely integrated into CRM for us. The same team manage social media communications um, as manage email, as manage any touch point with the consumer. Our goal is always to be able to talk to music fans in one voice. Um, for consumers l at large, they're often used to five or six different channels through which brands are delivering messages. They can be inconsistent, they can be disparate, and we've had to work hard to make sure that we've got one global strategic window, uh, windowing system in place that enables us to A, have visibility on the conversations that we're starting, B, engage in conversations that already exist, and C, evaluate the impact and the effect of those conversations. Um, but again, we're in a position where we can afford to invest time and resource into this because we've reached critical mass, as I mentioned, in terms of the number of consumers that we actually manage. So at, a, at the heart of our approach, um, what have we seen that, that works? What drives energy, vibrancy? What makes communities thrive? So providing exclusivity, you know, we're in a good position as a music company in that we've got engaging, compelling content. That's our business. Um, and we're able to use that to drive relationships with our core fan bases. No spam, it's an obvious point, but at the same time, the balance between informed information that consumers can act upon that's of interest and messaging that actually doesn't resonate and isn't relevant is, is a, finely, um, a fine balance. And we've had to spend a lot of time looking at exactly what works, what are the key metrics in a world of unlimited, almost unlimited data that indicate whether spam is, is having an effect in activity, for example, within Facebook groups, um, looking at the difference between the overall community um, and the active community is something that isn't often um, done in the wider world. We've put it right at the heart of our approach, and so we no longer quote large headline numbers where we know there's no meaning there. We focus on what does mean something. We, we look at quality over quantity. Vibrant, evolving, creative, absolutely. So we see social media as serving two key purposes. One is absolutely community, that goes without saying. It houses large groups of fans who want to talk to each other, want to talk to our artists, but equally it's a venue for events. And so we try to blend both an event-based approach and an always-on community approach to sustain life in those groups. Great content, planned three months ahead. Again, it, it sounds obvious, but I think we've moved over the last five to ten years from a position of, um, of, of being very proactive um, in terms of how we manage, what content we push into Facebook profiles, for example, how we use Twitter to launch albums, how we break videos via other niche networks, but now we take a firm, well-planned, three-month view, so that at any one point in time we've got a, a good sight of what it is that we need to do. Meaningful dialogue, again, the Phil Collins example is one example, but actually being able to monitor conversations that matter is a challenge. Um, we've used online monitoring software before. We've worked with many, many partners. There are great benefits to each and every one of those products. There are some elements that, that give us less, but equally um, we do want to move towards um, a position and help contribute to the, in, uh, to the industry debate around consistency, having one set of metrics that is consistent across social media, from agency to agency, from brand to brand, uh, and from media to media. And I think we're probably only halfway through that journey as a, an industry at this point. Relevant opportunities to transact. So, as I mentioned, for us, with a digital product, we can directly transact within this space. But what's most important to us and for our artists, ultimately, is reaching as many fans as possible, being able to deliver relevant content at the right time, through the right channel. Um, and we can see recent partnerships evolving in this space, which are clearly helping us to do that. Data analysis. I think I've already mentioned our key point there. You know, there's a lot of data. We went through the same challenge a lot of people did. How do we carve that data up? How do we focus on what's relevant? And again, that came through dialogue between our commercial, our marketing, our distribution, our operations, our sales teams to make sure that we can spot what we need to focus on, devote resource to that, um, and not sift through piles of data that ultimately isn't necessarily relevant. And our other approach, because we look after Warner Music Group's social media, properties XUS is taking a global, single global community approach but using local language delivered through the segmentation that Twitter will offer, Facebook does offer, email always has. 
And we found that's incredibly effective. We moved away from building different country groups for each of our artists a number of years ago. We had different content managers that was inconsistent um, content at risk of appearing, and we spotted that, uh, and we moved in. And so now, as I mentioned, we have one global approach, um, which in terms of re-engineering marketing teams that do work and report into international marketing teams is quite a challenge and, again, does require a lot of dialogue. So what are our key conclusions from the last year? And I've just pulled a few out here, but content management is king, but it's a full-time job. So we now have content managers within every part of our business, completely devoted to managing relationships and conversations with consumers. Yes, that's going to happen in social media, but as I mentioned, that also happens within the email marketing world. It certainly happens across blogs and forums um, up and down the land, and we have to engage within communities created by our fans as well, which can be a challenge. Data is plentiful, but analysis takes time. TV is certainly powerful. The biggest peaks of traffic that we ever see in terms of driving take-up and membership <coughs> of our Facebook communities come from good old-fashioned, over-the-line TV radio promotion. Digital marketing absolutely is important. It's a long tail game. We reach deep into small communities, but those large impact moments that we can be driven by TV have a huge impact. But of course, again, structurally, we have to make sure as a business that internally there's productive dialogue at all times between our traditional marketing teams, between our TV advertising agencies, and between our digital in-house teams. And that takes time, I think, to make sure that conversation is being attended to by every relevant party. Mobile is without a shadow of a doubt the most social channel in history for us. Um, you can tweet, like, listen, watch, map, talk, text, email, meet via one device. And we've put that at the heart of our strategy. So we would take, you know, I think the first learning that we have really, you know, I would say, pulled from social media and our experiences in the last five to ten years is that mobile actually fuels a lot of engagement. It's right at the heart of it. It's an impulse device, and mobile marketing certainly should not be siloed off from social media teams. They need to sit together. And maximizing the social media opportunity requires a long-term commitment. You know, we have gone through transformation. We've re-engineered our marketing teams. I think probably most people here have done that as well. That's pretty fundamental. And when we look at the disruption that um, is going on in the agency world as well at that point, it's a great opportunity. It can be a confusing opportunity, but it does require um, a reliance upon, I think, and a return to, which is the point that came up on the panel earlier on, the good old-fashioned principles of marketing, how to create a compelling proposition, how to enter into dialogue with fans, you know, which we have done for many, many years. I think if you go back to the mid-90s, you couldn't buy a CD without receiving a, a small card that you'd send to Leamington Spa, no matter where you were in this country, to sign up to a fan club. Um, the principles of engagement are the same, the speed, the dynamics have completely changed and the resource required to manage those dynamics has definitely changed. So I think you know, our final um, learning really that we've taken um, from the last 12 months when we look at marketing is that all media is social. You know, to silo off um, can be counterproductive. All of our PR teams work with every major media brand and every major media brand has invested heavily in social so the only thing the only currency that really makes us milk as much as we can from those productive relationships with media partners is taking a collaborative approach so again as well as managing our own properties we're very very keen and we do very regularly work with a lot of other social communities um, and i think it's a very productive place to be and i can see that nokia is doing the same I think I've whizzed through that quite quickly, so we've got time for questions. We have got time for questions. Who has a question for Rich? No? We're flagging in the final straw. Oh, we have a question. Thank you very much. You, you've got your own mic there, I think. Hi, Rich. Um, what, what value do you put on um, analytics used by top, the top spins, um, Reverb Nation, those types of programs? We put a lot of value on that, absolutely. I mean, you know, consumer insight for us is incredibly important. I think um, the, the bigger problem we have is, is how do we take the kind of data that we'll get from you know, the partners you've mentioned as well as the data that we get from our digital retail partners, um, our online streaming partners, our video partners, um, and pull that into one place where we can make one meaningful decision. Where is value? You know, so, for example... If you look at Bruno Mars, you know, it's a great success story of ours from the last two years. 
then we've driven 650 million views of Bruno Mars content on YouTube alone. But we can see at the same time that ultimately um, video content within the Facebook environment will often drive 33% more engagements than audio content. And then we can have a look at the actual hard metrics around advertising revenue that may have been driven around our content. So if you look at those three quite disparate facts, then the key for us has been, okay, how do we create a team that can take that information and can actually um, pull that into actionable recommendations? Yeah, which I think is, you know, it's a, I think it's not a perfect science. We're some way through that process, but um, you know, to answer your original question, we absolutely place high value on it, but we place, you know, as high um, value upon making sure that we get outputs that we can act against. I think you've got your own microphone in front of you. Just push the, the button in front of you. You? Sorry, brain dead. Um, how much do you le learn by, um, how much do you look at emerging me um, social media platforms? So quite a lot of your um, fan bases I expect are quite niche. So do you spend time looking for a particular social media platform that jazz lovers use or what have you? Or do you stick to the more traditional, obvious ones? No, it, it, it takes us into many, many, you know, many, many... Uh, far and um, wonderful places absolutely so we work with you know artists from the world of dubstep all the way through to jazz classical hip-hop um rock pop so you know it's very um it's very diverse i think probably if you look at, at how we develop artist careers then we have expertise centers in different parts of the warner business for each of those genres so you know the expertise will be held by um certain teams and then you know our our role if you like becomes sharing that knowledge making sure that we've got visibility worldwide of, of you know, what those niche communities are. Um, and equally, we work directly with fans you know, that run and manage communities. You know, so so we, this is a, a huge trend for us in the last 12 months. The tools that are out there now in the digital space, and especially for artists that are engaging with young audiences, um, it means that we suddenly see the rise of a lot of communities that... You know, we're we're happy, you know, not to be controlling. You know, it's great, it's fantastic to see that much energy and emotion around what it is our artists are doing. But again, we do have to engage those communities so they can take us into some very um, some very uh, wonderful places for sure. Great. Uh, final question up there at the back. Thank you. Um, oh? Yeah. Um, this might seem an, an ancient history question, but. Um, how do you react to the criticism that in the early days of social, the music industry just got it wrong um, in terms of file sharing? And are you guys still kicking yourselves that iTunes has got the market sewn up? I knew somebody would ask that. Um, That's what to be honest, hospital cut pass question, yeah. to, to be honest with you, I mean, we were... I think the key point is that, you know, when it comes to music, it was one of the first drivers of social media anyway. So what it meant was that for us, it was always a priority early on. <laughs> And so we went through a test and learn phase, you know, absolutely. And I think when you're re-engineering, um, or rather when you're, you know, when, you're, when you're in a world where your commercial channels um, and your marketing channels are changing so swiftly, um, then you, know, you, can, you, know, you, you have to react as, as quickly as is possible in order to still drive effective campaigns. So I think, you know, I think the industry has always um, evolved uh, as quick a pace as it could. And I think if you look at that, those transformations in the media world and how other industries are reacting, then I think you know, we've not seen a difference in that pace. I think it's just a challenge and a headache that we probably, or rather what was perceived as a, you know, an issue that we had to deal with early on, um, and I think now it's a great opportunity. In terms of your other question, you know, we've got great relationships now with, with all of our commercial partners. Um, yeah, they're very productive. Collaboration is at the heart of that. Um, and I think, you know, we're, we're, in a, we're happy to be in the position that we're in. Great answer. I'll just allow one more question, if it's quick. Yes, hi. So just wondering about Facebook, and obviously it's very important when measuring the artist's success, but I'm wondering if you have any kind of metrics in terms of how many likes are now the new thing people are talking about. How strongly do you consider that, or are you willing to look at an artist that really doesn't have a lot going on socially and really value more of what they're doing musically when you're starting to pick who you're going to work with? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, you know, our artists are at the heart of the business, you know, ultimately, without... Um, you know, without our artist, then we wouldn't be here. So, yeah, we work, you know, absolutely. I think when we're working with a new artist, you know, it has to be always about talent. It has to be about 
um, how um, we can then help and work with our artists in the long term to actually grow a social media base, you know, if we need to. So we have, you know, we have exactly that challenge. You know, we will sign new artists that you know, will come to us with five, uh, with five fans. Um, you know, and we, we've got great, um, you know, at our record labels, the digital teams, a large part of what they do is, is, is purely driven by fan acquisition. You know, we know that. So, but equally speaking, you know, when we work with, with artists like Linkin Park or the Red Hot Chili Peppers, you know, that will come with tens of millions um, of fans within their Facebook communities to stick on that example, then, you know, that's, that's, a, that's another challenge in itself, as you can imagine, when you're managing <coughs> conversations w within communities of that size and scale. Um, but um, but yeah, so it, it's it's very diverse. You know, numbers of, of from from each end of the spectrum, for sure. Well, Rich, I think um, we've asked and spent so much of your valuable time. So thanks very much for that. Would you please thank Rich very much for morning? Thank you.